Imagine back 25 years ago when cash in the bank earned so much interest, you weren't forced to invest into risky assets that you don't know anything about. Well, in this video, I'm gonna explain exactly how you can still earn investment type returns, but on cash, just like the good old days. So stay tuned. All right, welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Mark Moss. I like to talk about making money, investing money, and just general success principles. Now, if you like that type of content, go ahead, click the like and subscribe button right now. Make sure to hit that notification button so you know every time I post new videos. Now, at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to earn these types of returns on your cash that I'm talking about. And I'm also gonna have this very helpful tool that I created to track cash flow. And actually, you can go download it in the free link that's in the description if you wanna download that tool if you don't stick around till the very end. Now, let's go ahead and just get right into it. So first off, making money with our money, it's the most important thing, right? We, we spend a lot of time learning how to make money, a lot of time focusing on making money, but we don't really spend a lot of time about what we do with our money afterwards. And so we want our money to be working harder than we do. So our money should be making money and we're going to be continuing to rail on the banks. Now, if you missed my video from last week where I railed on the banks, I'm going to put it up here where we talked about the conspiracy. The banks are trying to steal our cash. But today we're talking about making money with our cash. Our money's making harder and harder. And so um, continuing on from that theme from last week, um, the banks are just lowering interest rates all the way down to zero. They're printing unlimited amounts of money. We talked about that. And as they do that, as they inflate the money supply, it steals our value. It's basically taking taking away the purchasing power. The money is still in the bank, but how much it can buy is gone. So they're stealing the value, stealing the purchasing power of that. And the bank, the, the government, the Fed, the central banks report that they're trying to keep about a 2% inflation. That means you're losing about 2% of your value every year. Um, However, we all know it's a much higher than that. Um, Shadow Statistics says that it's actually about five or six percent. So you need to make about five percent on your money every month just to keep up with what it's what it's losing, what they're stealing from you, right? So that's just to keep up. That's just to keep even. Um, but ultimately, we want to grow it. We want we want to you know make it grow bigger and bigger. We want it to work hard, and so it actually needs to be making more than five percent to grow, right? So if we're making six percent, maybe we made one percent when you adjust it for inflation. Now. This used to be pretty easy. It didn't used to be that hard. Now, um, I'm kind of old. So uh, if, you're, if you're old like me, maybe you remember those days when you could put money into a CD at the bank. Young kids don't even probably know what a CD is because nobody really uses them anymore. Um, it's a certificate of deposit. I could deposit money and it would pay me interest. I could just put money in the bank into my savings account and that would pay interest. And so I could leave it there and I could earn interest, but now nothing pays interest. Now, again, like I said, when I was a kid, uh, if, if I want to make myself sound old, I mean, you could just put a million dollars in the bank and you could live off the interest. So in 1984, when I was just a young kid, um, you could make 12% interest on your money in the bank, 12%. Imagine that in 1990, you could make 9% interest in 1995 you could make 6.6% interest. Now that doesn't sound like that long ago to me uh, because I'm old. Uh, 1995, you could still make 6.6% interest in the year 2000. You could still make 6% interest on your money. But today the banks pay out less than 1%. It's like 0.08% interest on average the banks pay out. It's just ridiculous. Now, why is that, right? Well, as we talked about in that video last week, right, what the banks are doing, um, they're pushing interest rates down to zero. But what it's doing is since I can't just put money in the CD, I can't put money in the bank, I'm, I'm losing, right? I'm losing to inflation. What it does is it forces me, it pushes me into these risky investments, right? And, and most people don't know anything about these investments. They don't know what they're doing. And so what happens is it's pushing people into take risk, more and more risk. It's also creating these asset bubbles we're not going to talk about that. If you want to know more about um, pushing people into risky investments and creating asset bubbles, leave a comment down below. If I have enough comments, I'll make a separate video about that. But the thing is, is that investing, we always say that with investing, don't invest what you can't afford to lose. So, you know, if I can, if I have extra money, I can afford to lose it, or it's money that I don't need for a long time. It's like for my retirement, then I can put that away and I can invest it. And if I lose a little bit, hopefully I have time to make it back. But what you don't want to do 
is you don't want to invest money that you need, money that you're going to need, uh, you know, in to live off of, money for emergencies or money for the short term. You know, I've pounded the table over and over. You need to save at least a couple of months of expenses, living expenses for emergencies. You need to have that. I like to say at least six months. I know it's something that you can work up to but also for shorter term things. So if you need to um, get your car fixed soon or get new tires or buy a new car or send your daughter off to college or whatever it may be, if there's something that you're going to need cash in the near term, you also want to keep that available, right? You don't want to send that out where, where it has a risk of losing. So we have this cash that we're saving for emergencies or we're saving for short term, but it's losing value, right? So what can we do with that? So today I'm going to show you a new part of the market that pays almost like dividend or investment like dividends, but on your cash. So that's really cool. You guys want to see that? All right. Now there's a little bit of a twist. It's not exactly cash, but it's kind of like cash. So you know that on this channel, I talk a lot about cryptocurrencies. I mostly talk about Bitcoin, uh, but also cryptocurrency as a, as a technology. Now I can already hear the draw, the size in the back. It's, it's not what you think. Hang on, hang on. So we're talking about, you, you've probably heard, if, if you've been hearing me talk about cryptocurrencies, we've talked about passive income with cryptocurrencies, and you could stake cryptocurrencies and earn rewards on that. Um, but also there's like crypto back loans. And so basically I could take my Bitcoin, my Ethereum, whatever, and I could I could stake it or I could, I could put it up for loans and I could receive interest on that. Now what happens is, it's kind of two ways it's it's been done. I'll link to it here. There's a, there's a, there's a centrally controlled model, and then there's a algorithm controlled model, a couple different ways. Um, but basically what happens is by, by using new technology like cryptocurrencies, they can cut out the middleman, and then you can earn a higher percentage on that. Now, we have another part of the market that's not cryptocurrency specifically, but they're called crypto stable coins. And so if you've heard of that, stable coins is kind of like what Facebook was trying to come out with, where instead of just like Bitcoin, that's just backed by Bitcoin and it's always moving against the US dollar, these stable coins are always pegged one to one against the dollar. So if you consider the dollar stable, they'll always be worth a dollar. All right, now what happens is you have these centrally controlled um, institutions that are essentially peer-to-peer uh, -peer middlemen. And what happens is, is you can give them your money, they'll loan it out at higher rates and they'll pay it back. Now, before you uh, just shut this video off, let me explain. This is exactly what the banks do. So when your money is in the bank, they're not just holding that for you. They don't just hold your money there for when you want to come get it. What they do is they actually fractionally reserve it. So if they take in a hundred dollars, they'll loan out 90. Well, that person that got 90 goes and deposit it and then they're going to loan it out and on and on and on. And so they can create 10 times the amount of money on your deposits. So they're loaning it out. Now, the average that the banks make in interest is like 17%. Now I know interest rates have come down and so like home loans are still really cheap, but credit cards are still really high, especially if you miss a payment, they could be 17, 20, 25% interest on credit cards. Auto loans are still pretty high depending on what your credit is. The majority of auto loans are still subprime, so they're still pretty high. Um, and so the banks are still making the same interest they always were. They just don't pay it to you right? Lending makes a lot of money. Then on top of that, if, if you watched that video I made last week, I talked about how most banks aren't even actually loaning out to small businesses and, and customers, retail customers. They're actually investing into these derivatives market in these, in these much more uh, risky markets. Now, what happens is, like I said, so they're still making the same amount of money, but they just don't pay you anything. So they're keeping the whole 17 point spread. And so now we have these new peer-to-peer uh, -peer lenders, these new um, crypto lenders that are using algorithms, using technology to be able to cut out the middleman. And so they'll still make the 17%, but instead of keeping all 17, they'll pay you out six, eight, 10, 12%. All right. So that way you can make a lot more money. Now I'm not talking about cryptocurrencies because if you were to put your money into Bitcoin or Ethereum or, or any of these other coins that I like, the values are going up and down, right? Bitcoin, which I still believe is the best investment opportunity that we have, is volatile. Could be worth 7,000 one day, 9,000 another day, and back to 7,000 again. And that doesn't work for money that I need in the short term. I put a lot of money into Bitcoin, but I'm playing a really long game. So here's what we can do. What we can do is we can take our cash and we convert our cash into a stable coin. That's like USD coin, true USD, DAI, uh, GUSD. There's several types of, of dollar back coins that we can do. So when I put a dollar 
um, on deposit, they give me a dollar back loan. So that crypto token, that stable coin will always be worth a dollar. And then what I do is then I can put that up for loan on a centralized lending platform. All right, now these are centralized, so they're a little bit more controlled than the decentralized one. I'm not gonna get into that. If you want me to break that down in another video, leave me a comment down below. But some of these centralized lending platforms are Celsius, BlockFi, Nexo, and Crypto.com. And so we can put our money up onto there, they'll loan it out for us, they'll manage all of that, and they'll just pay us the bigger spread, the, big, the bigger difference. Like I said, it's no different than what a bank does. Now, anytime, Anytime you do anything, there's risk, right? There's risk if you do something, there's risk if you don't do something. There's risk if you loan your money out, there's risk if you don't loan your money out, right? Like I said, you're losing value right off the bat, so there's always risk and we want to understand what those risks are. Now, of course, when I put my money up onto a platform, I'm introducing risk, there's counterparty risk. The counterparty, there's now a third party in between this and something could go wrong. So what we wanna do is we wanna understand what those risks are, we wanna mitigate that. And how we mitigate that is by doing our due diligence on those companies. We wanna look at um, the founders, we wanna look at who, who the investors are, we wanna look at how much cash they have on hand, what their insurance policies are, and so forth. Now, most of the ones that I've mentioned, I've been using myself personally, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but what I also like to do is I like to spread my money around. So instead of putting it all into one platform, maybe I'll divide it up by three or four and put it across three or four platforms. So I'm spreading my risk out. Now, I've, like I said, I've been using several of these. I've been doing my due diligence. I've done interviews with several of the founders of these companies, and you can see them on the channel. Uh, I've also interviewed them on the podcast. Uh, but one that I've been using recently that, that's pretty cool is uh, crypto.com. Now, this is not a sponsored video. However, I do have an affiliate link, and I'll go ahead and put it in the description. If you want to help me out on the channel, you can use that affiliate link, but it's not a sponsored video. But um, what's, what I like about crypto.com, unlike the other ones, is that they gave me this really cool metal card card and I have it's basically it's a visa card so I can put my cryptocurrency I can put my stable coins and I can put everything on this card and then I can go around and I can spend it everywhere that visa is accepted now I travel a lot and so what's cool is I can take this card with me use it everywhere get into airport lounges and all that stuff it's pretty cool but I can also stake so using the app I can have my stable coins my US dollar coins that, that do not go up in value, up or down in value, and then I can put them up to make money on. I can make 10, 12%, maybe even more, 12%, 16% on my cash. And then as I'm out spending, I can just spend it right from here. So it's like having money in the bank that I have easy access to, but at the same time, I'm earning high rewards. So um, I really like that. I've been using it a lot lately. It, it works pretty good. Now, like, and like it's not a sponsored video, do your own due diligence. Um, I named about three or four platforms that I've been trying personally, um, but it's really cool. Just think about keeping cash. You need to keep cash for short-term um, expenses. You wanna keep cash for emergency expenses. Like I said, I like to keep at least three months, if not up to six months, that's what I recommend. Um, and I, I just believe that once you start building up your cash and you start getting cash flow, you start earning interest, like what we can do by staking stable coins, it becomes really addictive, at least for me it has. And so my goal about a decade ago was to get my passive income to meet or exceed my living expenses. And once you can do that, you're financially free. You don't have to work for money anymore. It doesn't mean you have to retire, but you're not forced to work. And so you want to start building up that cash flow. And this is a great way to do that. You can earn 10% on your cash instead of getting into these risky investments. Now, I did tell you at the beginning that I had this really cool tool I put together. It's a cash flow tracking tool. Um, you can go ahead and download it. I'm going to link it down below in the description. And basically, it's a, I have a video that shows you how to use it in a guide. And, and then it's a sheet that you can start to put all your different cash flow in there and you can track your expenses your monthly expenses and your cash flow and the goal the object of the game is to get your cash flow to meet or exceed those expenses and what's cool with this sheet is that you can see it every single month you track it you enter that number every month you see it and it becomes a game like i said that you want to win and uh so it's worked really really well for me it's worked well for a lot of people that i worked with and so i want to give it to you for free so go ahead and download that down below let me know what you think are you going to use U.S. stable coins, U.S. dollar peg stable coins and put it onto these, one of these platforms, crypto.com or some of the other ones that I've mentioned? Let me know in the comments down below. And that's it. To your success. I'm out.